I blanked out. Okay, <laughs> this is like the worst part it's every like, single time. Every single time. Sam always laughs at me. He's always like, you yelled at her. And I'm like, because it was her sixth episode and she's still nervous. And now we're on I episode 11. Nervous. Still nervous <laughs> as usual. Okay. Okay. New year. Still nervous. Yep. Same me. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of 2024. That didn't make sense. (laughs) (laughs) You jumped ahead two years. No, I meant 2020. Wait, that didn't make sense either because it's 2022. Hold on. Rewind. You know what what I was thinking in my head? Because there's this meme that says like, it's 2022. Oh like yes, twenty all over again. I was thinking it's that. like twenty twenty two as well. Yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's twenty twenty four. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's twenty twenty for all of us again. Twenty twenty two. Yes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> let's try this one more time. All right, let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to Sonographers in the Cities. I'm Lynn. And I'm Giselle. This is our first episode of 2022. Yay! Happy New Year, everybody! (laughs) Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a good New Year, the first week of 2022. Hopefully it's been calm and relaxing and get all of us are um, kind of getting back to our usual routine from holiday break. Yes. I mean, it has been a crazy few weeks. I know you guys um, that are coming back and listening to us, we actually took a little break from the holiday season. Um, For those of you who are new here, welcome. Me and Lynn are here to help you guys through your ultrasound journeys or life in general. And uh, it's it's been a wild few weeks. Uh, Lynn has been super busy and I have also been super busy with family stuff. And so sometimes you just have to put your priorities straight and do what you need to do. Uh, so we kind of put the podcast on the side for a little bit, but now we're back, New Year, and we're here to talk about last year and going into this year. And we just want to thank you guys for listening and being here because this podcasting, it takes a lot to do, but we do it for fun and we do it for you guys. And we want to make sure we it doesn't become something that is like business or like, you know, that would stress us out. We want to do it and have fun and be there and provide for you guys so i want to thank lynn for coming here and showing up new year same her (laughs) i also want to thank giselle for showing up as well because she just worked a graveyard shift and we were trying to like figure out time and after her overnight shift um this is the best time so we're both really tired but um like giselle said I want to thank you to every one of you who are listening, who are watching. We did take a break only because like life gets in the way. So we have like personal things, family things, just a lot going on. And the podcast, it is fun for us. Like we do it because we have fun and we have fun doing it for you. But sometimes like we have to put it to the side, like just how said, just to like, you know, take our priorities. And I just want to thank you, you guys, for being patient and supporting us. And we can't wait to see what we'll bring this year. Yeah. I mean, last year was pretty crazy. I mean, we started in October for Ultrasound Awareness Month. And we never thought that it would like kind of get to where it is right now. Like we always say we're still a baby podcast because we are. This is only the 11th episode. And we have reached 2,222 
downloads like two 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 in the year 2022 like two maybe that's a good number for us right now it's just me and lynn and the two of us with you guys so (laughs) it's been crazy. crazy yeah so hopefully this year we kind of like expand the podcast obviously in 2021 lynn had to do you know her school stuff clinicals and all that and now we're kind of she's scanning more and I'm seeing her see more things and I was you know starting my MBA program and like it was such a high and then there's lows and highs and lows like school you guys know how it is that are you know you, y'all are in school it's a roller coaster yeah like it's definitely tough but this is why we're doing this and going through it all together And uh, we're here to show you guys that you can do what you're doing. You can get through your programs. You can still stay busy, focus on family, and still get through it. Exactly. How how has your uh, school been, I mean, now going into this year? Honestly, during winter break, I did not think about school. Mm -hmm. Oh, except last night I had a dream that I failed the SBI (gasps) and I had to retake it. Like the art, I got an mail from um the ard saying that i failed <laughs> oh my goodness so that was like my dream before going back to you know my <laughs> school tomorrow <laughs> oh no yeah but um it's, but you passed but so it's okay i passed i i have <laughs> We're okay the, guys i still have the paper so i'm <laughs> i pass and now i'm just focusing on clinicals like i'm in i'm still in the vascular lab so it's my last quarter wanting to learn everything I can before I move on to echo rotation. And I can't wait because I have 11 months left. Oh my gosh, it's, it's going by really quick. So do you graduate in December this year uh-huh. or January? Yes. Next year? Unofficially, I'll be done by Thanksgiving. Oh, so that's okay. the plan. That's my plan. That's it. So here we go. 2022. It's gonna be that's my year. biggest, biggest thing to look forward to for 2022 yeah. what about you um hopefully graduating from the MBA program too so with my master's that's kind of the goal here I mean that's the only other priority I have right now other than like trying to figure out you know saving money and eventually moving out somehow one way or another <laughs> for those of you guys who are still at home with your parents like no shame there whatsoever do what you gotta do but you know it's kind of like school is my number one obviously keep on working and doing the YouTube thing but I don't know just kind of I don't really have anything major other than graduate with that degree because that's the one thing that's been like holding me back from doing anything else because I'm just so focused on that and you guys and like my Instagram and social media stuff, other things I haven't really thought about. I think that despite like all of these stresses that we're going through, like the commu- this community is very supportive. So it's like, even if you need to take a break, like I did in December, um, going back is very heartwarming. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you felt it. Yeah, no, I definitely, I see it. You know, everyone is busy. There's people that I have used to talk to like all the time and then they kind of like disappear for a minute and I know they're doing their thing and then they like pop up and then they like talk again. And and then there's a bunch of new people I've been talking to. So, you know, just being able to talk to everyone and see where everyone is on their journeys. That's kind of what this whole thing is about, like this community. And I mean, I've met so many you know, new people, and then even got to talk to, like, Mary Beth, for example, who's uh, Sono Eyes Ultrasound, like, I had never actually really talked to her, but I did a whole interview with her, and, like, just learning her whole story, it's amazing, and to know that there's so many people like that out there in this community that we still have yet to talk to, it's pretty mind-blowing. I mean, I still see new ultrasound Instagrams, and stuff. Yes, it pops up on my feed all the time. It's like, oh, some was it people you may know. Mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, it's very yes. very exciting. Yeah, it's only gonna grow from here too. I think, especially with yes. the career itself growing. Obviously, we know 
that COVID is a lot and it, it's either drawing people towards the healthcare field or making people think about their careers and things like that and what they want to do. So it's been pretty I cool. Think, I think it's both because mm-hmm. from what I see, a lot of people are burnt out. They've been in the field for 10 plus years. They they want to be done. And then there are students like myself who are like, we're so excited to be here. Mm-hmm. And it's like to do for another decade, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's both. I think it's a good turnover, even though everywhere is like short staffed. I'm not sure how it is with your hospital, but in New York, it seems like everywhere is short staffed. Oh, let me tell you, everywhere short staffed out here. Um, and constantly people are calling out sick or, you know, the doctors are ordering so many exams. It's been pretty crazy uh, for the world of healthcare and I mean ultrasound is feeling it too because we do a lot of venous ultrasounds on possible PUI which is patient under investigation because they might have COVID Uh, we do a lot of chest ultrasounds we do arm ultrasounds for uh, the veins as well arteries they still do abdomens we still do all the regular stuff. A lot of pregnant women are getting COVID. And, you know, a lot of the labor and delivery patients are getting um, exams ordered on their kidneys, which we would usually just do the babies, but now they're getting their kidneys checked, their legs checked. And it's just, it feels so overwhelming. But that's the thing. It's like, there's always going to be a job or a need for the field right now. I don't think ultrasound is going anywhere anytime soon. (laughs) <laughs> definitely not I think that it's just gonna grow like with technology is gonna grow with the education the program is gonna be more rigorous more intensive with the growth that comes along with you know the field and it's just very exciting mm-hmm. I don't know when you talk about it I just think I was like hmm how can we like reach out to um, professionals who are doing it so that we can learn more? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that'd be very fascinating. Oh yeah. And it's, it's kind of crazy to think that it's all over, not even just the United States, but all over the world. And then ultrasound is used for anything and everything nowadays. And then doctors depend on us. And then, you know, I depend on, my other uh, sonographers or other sonographers out there to teach the new generation of sonographers because I think that it's important that you guys get the adequate education so that you can provide, you know, it's like a full circle. And I hope that everyone that's listening will eventually, you know, either if you're not in the program yet or you are in a program, like have that conversation with your you know mentors and your classmates because the part that makes it a little bit harder for us to be able to do that in this field are the ones who are afraid to speak up or also the sonographers who don't want to help which you know there are going to be those who don't really want to help students because that's how it was but we have to also try to show them that you guys want to learn and you want to be able to do these kinds of things because I think a lot of the issue I've seen so far is like some students don't get the adequate scanning time or you know because it's so busy and it's like how do we fix that and these are things that we have to discuss and talk about and you know bring to light in the community because when you go on those Facebook groups you see people who complain or like you know not on the student side but also the sonographer side and yeah, it, it's something we can do to really change uh, in the ultrasound field. I totally agree. Like with um, students, for me, like one one week, one or two weeks before winter break, I noticed that um, a lot of my scanning time directly relates to patients. Uh, was it the patients coming in? If they come late, then it's rushed the whole schedule is rushed so I won't have time or students won't have time to scan 
or um, if patients or PUI or COVID positive, weren't, students aren't scanning those. So it's just like our education depends on the current environment of the site that we're at. So it's it's tough. Like it's a tough. And I'm at a site where they want to teach. It's just the circumstances won't allow it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I don't know. It's, you have it's to so like hard. pick and choose. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know it's it's so hard because hopefully the students understand where we're coming from. And then obviously, hopefully the sonographers and us understand where the students are coming from. Because it, we can easily so say like, oh, just ask for more scan time. But then it's mm-hmm. always hard to just ask for that too. So it's it's such a hard topic. Like I always have people ask me like, what can I do to get more scan time? Other than ask, you know, like what else more can you do? It is, I totally agree. Um, for me, like I need a lot of scan time just to like practice before I can feel comfortable of doing a full study. Mm-hmm. And I can't do that when I'm brushed, when we have 30 minutes to do a carotid scan. I was like, how am I going to practice when I only have like 15 minutes? And that's only me doing a transverse, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, so man. it's, it's really tough for I can't speak for all the students out there, but I think I can speak for the students at my site because mm-hmm. um, for us, it's been tough for scanning, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, make it a goal, you guys, to like see what you can do to improve not only in school or at work or in clinical, but just kind of like when you go throughout this year, think about what you want to do to make yourself better. And the only way you can be better is if you put that into action I know a lot of us I mean 2020 and 2021 all were really hard years everything is so hard and I know life is so hard like we are all dealing with it but we have to think about how we can be more active of making it a little bit easier on ourselves you can only control certain things right so you can control your mindset do what you can um, but I think make it a goal to figure out you know, write down a list and what you want to see, all the things you want to accomplish. Lynn, I know we're going to look back at this and like literally in November, you're going to be like, wow, look at me now. And I can't wait to see that, you know? Oh my goodness. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Speaking of which, do you have a new year's resolution? Do you do that? Mm, well, I mean, resolutions are, they're usually every year I end up just kind of like making a little list and I'm just like, okay, so this is what I expect and like what I need to focus on, you know, but other than that, I don't really say like resolutions because it's stuff that I should be doing all year long and everywhere. And I know we always start at a point and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. But then like throughout the year, you kind of lose sight of it. Right. For the And then when it's like, if you're like in the mid year and then you're like new year's resolutions, you're like, you're like, Oh crap, I didn't do it anymore. <laughs> but I definitely want to like focus more on stuff like for myself. Um, I think the last two years I have been doing a lot of things for others. We're the type of people who like to put others before ourselves. And I think it's, while it sounds selfish, sometimes you have to be, you know, like sometimes you have to put yourself first because you're doing so much like going to ultrasound school not only is for yourself but it's for like your future for others for you you want to do it for your patients and you want to help the community and stuff like that so my goal this year is to just basically focus on me but I have like a whole list like look at all this all these things I want to do oh my goodness like be obviously healthier eat healthier and stuff like that um I did we did talk about how like I had some like of my heart stuff. So I have to figure out all my heart stuff, like what's going on with my heart. I'm getting a Holter monitor to monitor my heart. And then um, just kind of like my number nine is like, be happy. Like, why did I put be happy at number nine? You know, like should be number one, shouldn't it? But what's number one? Exercise daily. <laughs> you already do that. Not as much. I mean, the last two months was pretty bad. I, I, We didn't go to Orange Theory for about a month and a half, almost two months. 
And I mean, I had family in town and I was like busy every day, but you know, that all. But it's the holidays. Yeah, it's It's the the holidays. holidays. So that's why everyone's like, number one is always like work out, you know? What about you? What's yours? Actually, my number one is to work out. (laughs) (laughs) Only because my, my physical lab results came back and it isn't as what I expected. So what? So you did a physical? I just need to, huh? You did a physical? I did a physical um, because, you know, you get a physical once a year. And it's also my clinical clearance for second year. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, I just need to exercise every day like I used to when it was 2020 and I was in quarantine and I did nothing. (laughs) Right. So I have to figure out how I'm going to incorporate exercise into classes and clinicals and all that stuff yeah but you can do it yes I know it's possible hopefully I'm just like sometimes I'm like okay I hope I can do all this stuff I'm gonna try to do all this stuff no guarantees here but (laughs) you know life happens you just gotta try like try is the most you can do you know Mm -hmm. so what are you excited for when it comes to like just knowing everything that's coming your way this year most excited is to be done obviously Mm -hmm. I don't know I feel like last last year was pretty bad you know with my dad's passing so Mm -hmm. I feel kind of like refreshed this year and it's just a lot of like I'm like I you know it's like when you feel you've been like down you know the only way is to go up Mm -hmm. so that's how I feel right now I'm like nothing's gonna ruin me I'm like I have a lot of good things coming I just don't know what but the only thing I know is that I'm gonna be done with my program yes like you know (laughs) that you're almost there and you know just keep on looking up like actually I'm halfway oh my gosh program wow four and a half months Oh my gosh, that's so I have four and a half months left. I guess the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is graduating, being registered, because I plan to take it as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. And hopefully moving out of the city, you know, once I have a job and getting more settled. Mm -hmm. Where do you do you so you want to live like in the suburbs? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Is there like a lot of hospitals out there? Or like how is it out there in New York? suburbs in New York I'm not sure you haven't, <laughs> haven't been really out there not much because I'm in the city in the city are there a lot of hospitals yeah like um in Manhattan there are a couple big ones I think there's Mount Sinai there's New York Presbyterian there is uh New York Langone NYU Langone I don't know. I don't know how to say that word, but <laughs> there's like three major hospitals and then there are like branches. Ah, okay. But those like that's what I'm, I look forward to the most. And I also look forward to see where people are ending up with their programs. You know, some of um, the Instagrammers that we know uh, are graduating. So I'm excited yeah. to see where they are what they're gonna be I know a lot of them are and I know Rachel uh, she just graduated in December one of our moderators um, she actually it was so funny she FaceTimed me while she was at like when she was basically done at work but she had asked me a question because you guys know that I'm always there for you guys when you have questions and always yeah she had a question about one of her vascular exams and she FaceTimed me because um, she needs some help or whatever. But I was just like, look at you working, girl. Like, you're not even a student anymore. You're making money. Like, that's pretty cool to see. I mean, I was with her that whole year going through her whole entire program. And I mean, it's just amazing to see you guys do your work and and then eventually get jobs. And it's so exciting to know that this, like a whole new year brings a whole new opportunity and more people graduating, more people getting jobs. Like, it's pretty cool. And more people coming into a program. Yeah. So it's, it's like Actually, a whole cycle. Yeah, I know. Actually, I was thinking about that because I was like, oh my gosh, there's people who are asking me like the questions that I were asked like a year and a half ago, how to become an ultrasound technologist. And I'm like, oh my gosh, 
haven't been asked that in a while because everyone's like in school already or like in clinical and now you're you're gonna get new people younger people I mean there's gonna be some people who are older than us too trying to get in the field so I'm like are you gonna do what are you gonna do are you gonna do new posts like how are you gonna take this your new your account right with the new year I I don't know I mean I set out with DFS diaries just to document my journey, like kind of like a journal, like a digital journal, basically. And I'm just gonna keep doing that and see where it takes me. Like, you know, sometimes I post once a week, sometimes I post multiple times a week. It just depends. And I do get questions now. I'm like really jealous of um, high school students now because they have this option in school. (laughs) And I get questions like, I'm a high school student. I want to be a sonographer. How can I go about that? And to me, I'm like, I didn't think of this when I was in high school, you know, I'm so jealous. I should have thought of this years ago. I know. And now they have this option, Mm -hmm. but I love it for them. Oh yeah. I'm like, I think that's what we're trying to do too, is kind of make it not just ultrasound, but like radiology or other Mm -hmm. fields, respiratory therapists, like physical therapists, MAs, like the whole nine yards of healthcare. I think obviously we love nurses and doctors. They make the world go around and they are the fight, but we are all in healthcare together. And I'm just like, I see more, like I had actually a girl reach out. She does nuclear medicine. She's a student. And she was like, I don't see much about nuclear medicine. And I was like, you're right. I don't either. You should do it. Because she asked if she should do a channel. Totally agree. Yeah. I was like, why not? You know, you know what? The first thing I was at clinicals and one of the sonographers was like, you chose the wrong career. You should have gone to nuclear medicine. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you and now go. I do. <laughs> I know. And that's the thing is like, I also heard about nuclear medicine too. And I mean, a lot of people say nuke meds like the way to go. And I was like, oh, wish I had known that. Mm-hmm. You know, but I wish I had all these options, you know, <laughs> during career day in junior high or something, you know. I know, but, but it's okay. Life puts you where I feel like you're supposed to be. And you're doing really great at what you're doing and sharing your life and your journey. So, so are you. Thank you. So don't give up. <laughs> and that but, goes for all of you as well. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah, if you have something that you really want to do, just find the motivation. Don't forget your why. Like, why are you doing this? Like, every day, if you really need to remind yourself, I mean, you got to remind yourself constantly through the program, I feel like, because it's just that hard. (laughs) Oh, yes. So just remember that, like, yeah, life is hard, but there's always going to be a new day. Like, you know, right now we're in the start of a new year. So hopefully everybody has that mindset. It's always like so strong at the beginning of the year, I feel like. And you can kind of ride that wave. Hopefully ride it to December. (laughs) Yeah. It'll be ups and downs, but just ride it to December. And um, so this episode is basically uh, for Giselle and I to do a 2021 recap and to share with you what our hopes for 2022. And... What just like what Giselle said before, um, she's taking care of herself. So we hope that you guys are taking care of yourself because you come first. You can't take care of your others if you can't take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. So be selfish, take care of yourself so that you can do what you want to do and take care of others. Yes, we know that's what we're here for. I mean, healthcare workers, we are all so special. Um, I mean, not just healthcare workers, teachers, I mean, front frontliners everybody everyone's special in their own way you know but just do whatever you choose to do do it with love you know do it with kindness and it will really make a difference in the things that you do when you do do it that way Um, but me and Lynn are here to help you guys and we're here for you and you know you can reach us at our instagrams dms diaries and lol giselle on instagram on youtube channels and also uh, the discord which it's still thriving if y'all don't know we're they're talking every single day so come <laughs> join us somewhere or another and let us know if you need help with anything 
Of course, we're always here. Um, reach out if you need. If you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. You know, we'll be having weekly episodes and can't we can't wait to record more episodes for you with yes, you guys. new information, hopefully. Yeah, stay tuned. We've got a lot. I mean, ultrasound, we talk about a lot of different things, a lot of different topics. You're going to see other sonographers, other sonography students. We'll see what this year has in store for us. But Lynn and I, there's like a ton of things you guys have asked for. And of course, there's only so much we can talk about in 30 minutes. But we want to do that for you. And we're going to be here no matter how busy we are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll be here. <laughs> we'll be here. So we'll see you guys on the next episode. Yes. Take care of yourselves. Have a good new year. Have a good January. Yes. And we'll see you next week. Yes, talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Sleep time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good chillax episode. Yeah, chillax. Wherever life takes you. I don't even know. Half the, the bed. Of, I don't even know half the things I said. <laughs>